watch me whip, 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 watch me nay, nay. Hey. Human beings, we are funny. My mama told me to shop around. So baby, let me tell you what, don't be trying to pick me a man. Though, that's ours. I pick my own. We are tender. I had a favorite pig. I raised that pig from when it was a baby. I seen it when it be born. And one day when I came home from school, I wondered where my pig was. They took my pig to, to the butcher. No. Yes. I cried for like a whole two weeks. We are inspirational. When I was a junior, one of my um, childhood friends was murdered. And um, I don't know, it made me like push myself like to keep going. That's when I realized that I want to work with youth, that you can't forget about the youth. And we all have a story to tell. That's where Humans of St. Louis comes in, a social media platform with an inspiring mission to tell the stories of St. Louis, one person in photo at a time. I think it's really important as a mother to pass on cultural traditions to my kids. When my grandmother knew she was dying, she would say, when I die, I don't want anyone to cry. At the end of my casket, I want there to be a keg of beer. When I was younger, when my family would leave, sometimes I would go into the closet, dress up, and feel like how it was supposed to be. But I didn't understand it. It was kind of hard because nobody explained it to me. We are having a bad hair day. When we're out there, we're putting out the down and dirty real St. Louis. It's real life. It's what people have lived. And we're not trying to put a shine on it. Actually, quite the opposite. We want to take the shine away in, a, in, in a many ways because the shine is kind of like this, this guard and we want the guard to come down. And, and that's when people feel, you know, really connected and, and alive and part of a community. There's a lot of reasons that people share their most intimate stories with a stranger. From what I've heard on the street, a lot of it is, no one's asked me that question before. Thank you for taking the time to come up to me, to introduce yourself, and to ask me something that I didn't realize was even on my mind, or that was on my mind, and I needed to talk about it, or maybe I should be talking about this a little bit more. She goes into these convulsions. She kind of loses consciousness, at any time she could go into one and not come out. And I have them back to back sometimes. It's scary, so I know it's got to be scary for him. My biggest fear is losing her. That terrifies me more than anything else. We both had a crush on a girl in preschool, until she drew a mustache on her face with the permanent pin. We don't do girls anymore. Now we do video games. The reaction to this interactive social media experience has been remarkable. You see these like moments where people might have a need and then there's the followers who are this awesome community that come forward and say, I got, I got what you need, like I'll help you out there. When Dimitri's post explained his deplorable living conditions, the responses were immediate and compassionate. I'll hire you. I manage one of the largest security companies in St. Louis. I live near the Loop, so if he needs help with rides to go to work. Dimitri, you are not alone. Your city has your back. I offered to cover the cost of his locks being retwisted and braided. I set an appointment for him at my salon. We all have a fascination with others, which is what makes humans of St. Louis so very human. When you interview people, you can tell when that moment happens. And I want the audience to feel what I felt when I heard it. What is the most important thing anyone ever gave you? A home. What do you want to be when you grow up? Surgical doctor, because I want to look in people's bodies, and my mom's body. Is there something you want to fix about your mom? Yes, breast cancer. When you're in the comfort of your own home, if you can hear their story and see what they're about, that changes your perspective. And because it changes your perspective, you might be more likely in the future to cross the street or approach that homeless person and know that they're more than just what you thought they were. I kind of like to say that Half of the story comes together when we go out on the street, but the other 50% is that moment when you post it. And then a day later, 300,000 people have seen this person's story now. And I think that's really kind of beautiful.